You know, in general, we're interested in using Rotobacter's Ferides for biofuel production. Rotobacter, when it grows photosynthetically, it uh, naturally produces a large amount of lipids. And lipids are one of the um, chemicals or one of the uh, compounds that's being considered for use as a next generation biofuel. So we're trying to understand, to better understand uh, the genes required for photosynthetic growth in Rotobacter's Ferides. So we use this approach called transposon sequencing, right? So we basically generate a large collection of mutants. We can pool those mutants together and then extract genomic DNA from the, from the pool. We can use Illumina sequencing then to identify um, where the transposons have inserted in the genome. So transposons are just pieces of DNA that insert into a gene and disrupt the function of that gene depending on where they land. So this can create a phenotype if that gene is important. And when you look at that data in aggregate, you see that there's um, places in the genome where there are no transposons. And so that indicates that the gene underlying that is an essential gene, right? That gene is required for growth. So we use this approach to um, identify which genes are required uh, in, in three different growth conditions. So one of the conditions was uh, on LB plates, right? So this is a rich media uh, grown aerobically, right? So that's the condition in which we make this mutant library. Then we can take that library and grow it aerobically in a minimal media, which allows us to make predictions about which genes are required. Um, so for example, there's no amino acids that are uh, um, added to the minimal media. So we know, for example, that genes re uh, responsible for amino acid biosynthesis should be essential. And indeed they are. Uh, we then grew that library um, photosynthetically in minimal media. And again, we can make predictions about which genes are required for photosynthetic growth. So we developed a software that uh, allows us to uh, analyze the data that we get um, from a TNSeq experiment. So it takes the, um, basically the Illumina sequencing reads that we generate um, and allows us to identify which genes um, contain an insertion event. Um, so we can use this software to uh, find genes that contain no transposon insertions, which suggests that they have an important uh, phenotype. So what we learned from this was that uh, a lot of the genes that are essential in Rotobacter, for example, on uh, minimal media, are shared between uh, other bacterial species. So we're able to query those genes against a database of essential genes in other bacteria, and we find that many of those genes are the same. Right, so these are kind of the central dogma genes. But there are genes that are specific to Rotobacter, and so uh, these genes might be of interest because of the um, unique metabolic capabilities that Rotobacter possesses. And so we used our TNSeq data to update the metabolic model. Um, if we make changes to the genome, our metabolic model should help us uh, better understand the impact of those changes to the genome. So, for example, how we could redirect um, electron flow or um, carbon flow in the cell to a desired end product.